This video is brought to you by Squarespace. From website and online store to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful presence online or run your business. More on this later, but for now, ciao fan! Hey guys, salut, this is Alex. Welcome back to the fried rice series where I'm trying to master chow fan at a Cantonese restaurant level. So far, things are looking promising because I've got the stove, I've got the theory, and I've got the practice as well. In the previous episode, I did manage to make my first batch of fried rice and not gonna lie, it was pretty good. Pretty, pretty, pretty good. And that's basically for the good news. Now for the stressful news. Chef Samuel Lee Sum, the Michelin star Cantonese chef from episode number two, is coming to this place right here in about a week from now. Why is he coming, you ask? Well, he's gonna evaluate my fried rice skills. In a week from now, everything needs to be ready. My skills need to be honed. So with that in mind, my plan for the day is quite simple. I just wanna make sure that every little detail is sorted out. It should be plain sailing from here. Let's cook some rice first and then we'll, we'll stir fry it. So this is my new setup. It's a little more rustic than the studio. I do like the stove very much. From what I understood, traditional fried rice, especially in the southeast of China, is made using Simiao rice, which I don't have access to. But then I had a chat with Chef Samuel Lee. What about the rice you're gonna use? Yes, we used uh, jasmine rice. So this yeah. is Thai rice, no? Yes, Thai rice. Which is widely available here, so if it's good enough for him. It's a beautiful rice. It's not as long as basmati rice. I feel like this is more like an all-arounder. It's more versatile. It's a medium grain rice. So my kilo of rice is roughly five cups. Since I wanna keep it on the drier side, I'm gonna go for a one-to-one -one ratio between water and rice. So five cups of water. As soon as I get to a simmer, I lower the heat and then I cover it up for about, you know, 10 to 15 minutes. I see nothing. Like I could be literally spreading rice on the countertop. It would be the same to me. Right, so uh, right now I've got rice, I've got eggs, but I just want to use rice with nothing. Because I feel like if I were to isolate the variables, I would be able to control them more accurately. The rice is just one big mass. God damn it. Okay, calm down, Alex. Calm down. No need to worry. It's probably nothing. Let me just start again real quick. Right, guys, I'm afraid I don't have amazing news to share. In fact, to be honest, I'm embarrassed to show this to you. But since we have this transparent relationship, don't pay attention too much to the burn and the charred marks. It's a byproduct of me trying to dry a rice that is definitely too wet. It feels like there is some sort of glue that is activated. It doesn't want to separate. No matter how I control the heat, I try to spread the grains all over the wok in order to dry them. Maybe I did not use the proper water to rice ratio. I didn't left the rice to dry for long enough. All these options basically implies that I screwed up. The chef Samuel Lee Sum. What do you think he's gonna say when he sees this? I'm never gonna be allowed to go to China ever again. My rice at the moment is not suited for fried rice. It surprises me because if you remember at the end of episode number six, the fried rice that I produced back then was pretty good. I had beginner's luck. It means that I understand nothing. One thing that I could be doing, which I'm gonna do straight away, is take a picture of that. Sent straight away to Chef Samuel in order to get some guidance. Because guidance, I do need. A few moments later, here I am back in my kitchen. Uh, I've got amazing news since the chef Samuel Lee got back to me. 
with a full recipe on how to cook rice. This steaming method has an enormous advantage over the method I used earlier. If you remember, I basically cooked a kilo of rice directly inside this pot. It's heating up from the bottom, gradually going up. The heat distribution was uneven. There was also an enormous batch of rice because I was cooking a kilo. The bottom of the rice ended up completely overcooked. Steaming the rice is gonna be way more even. First of all, the steam goes everywhere. And so it's cooking the rice from above, from the bottom, from the sides. And second, right now I'm working with small batches, 100 gram of rice. I mean, I'm keeping my fingers crossed, but this should be spot on. I can already tell just by touching that rice with my spatula, the grains have more body, they have more structure. Mm. The rice is almost al dente, it's not undercooked, it's just slightly below the cooking perfection. The steaming method really is something to remember. I guess you could let it dry at room temperature, but I think it would be safer to let it dry in the fridge for one or two hours. Let me sum this up. If at the end of this cooking session, the texture of the rice is not right, I am screwed. I've been following a chef's recipe for the rice. It's been validated by a Cantonese master chef. So it means that something else is wrong. I don't want to point any fingers. I should remain optimistic. Maybe everything's gonna be fine. Well, there's only one way to find out. Let's start the engine. Sorry. All the grains of rice are nicely separated. <laughs> so happy at the moment. It looks good. There's definitely 100% there's work hay in that one. Show it to you. That is by far the best fried rice I've ever made. Wow, that rice preparation makes so much of a difference. Night and day. I mean, the grains of rice, not only they are nicely separated, but also 
their texture has improved a lot. Slightly springy, slightly chewy. There's a bit of fun in that dish now. I really don't know how I pulled this out, but the seasoning also is on point on this one. The grains of rice. There's a very delicate shine to them, but you can see that I use just the right amount of oil for that dish, because it's not like full of grease. There's no other method steaming method that's the one i know many of you only swear by the day old rice but this is superior because of the taste of the rice because of the flavors of the rice when you keep rice in the fridge for like 24 hours it becomes stale where in this case there still is a lot of freshness and freshness remember is the key mm. c'est mortel hein putain it would be too much to say that i'm worried but I've got a concern. I know I just said that I'm impressed with my own dish. <gasps> but is Chef Samuel really gonna be impressed by that dish? At best with this dish, he could acknowledge that I've done my homework and that I barely know how to replicate a recipe. I must go beyond that. I remember something from episode number two. Technique, origin, taste, origin, ingredient. We use the local ingredient. What's local about these ingredients? I should go and try to put my guts on the table. Probably a bit far. We need to add a little of me to that dish. To infuse it with personality. Where's the French vibe? Where's the Alex vibe in all this? Okay, so I'm gonna keep thinking. I'm gonna keep squeezing that brain juice. And hopefully when the chef comes to this place in about a week from now, I will be ready. I will have honed my Alex fried rice recipe. You take care. Bye-bye. Salut. I'm gonna stay right here because I'm gonna enjoy that bowl. You can go do whatever you want. I'm staying. Right, let's talk about today's sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace has powerful blogging tools to share recipes, photos, videos, and recommendations. Categorize, share, and schedule your posts to make your content work for you and share content on Facebook, Twitter, Google+, LinkedIn, StumbleUpon, Reddit, Pinterest, and Tumblr. The Squarespace blogging platform supports a configurable sharing button, letting your visitors share content on all social platforms. Connect with your audience and generate revenue through gated, members-only content. Manage your members, send email communications, and leverage audience insight all on one easy-to-use platform. Buying a domain from Squarespace is simple because there are no hidden fees or price hikes. Each domain comes with an ad-free parking page and a free Whois privacy on eligible domains. Squarespace sells over 200 top-level domains so you can find the perfect name for your website. Choose a URL that ends in .com, .net, .org or get even more specific with a .art. Check out squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash frenchguy to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. Thank you Squarespace for sponsoring this video.